So the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 8 Plus have wireless charging. I guess that's cool, but it's always nice to have Apple add something, add a new feature into their uh, products that might make our lives a little easier. Now, I've personally never really been sold on Qi wireless charging, uh, but with the uh, iPhone 8 and the iPhone X or 10 announcements, I figure I just give it another go. So I went and bought several Qi chargers and I really set out to answer the follow-up questions. What is Qi wireless charging exactly and what's the maximum charging distance? Do I really need a Qi wireless charger? What's the difference between the Galaxy s 8s fast wireless charging and the iPhone 8s? I was also wondering, you know, is there a difference in charge rate between charger? What, what's the fastest iPhone 8 charger? Uh, is there a difference between charge rates between the iPhone 8 and the 8 Plus? What cases don't work with Qi wireless chargers? And last but not least was which Qi charger should I get or should have gotten uh, instead of buying like eight. So for the rest of this video, I'm just gonna answer all those questions that I had and I'm just basically gonna share it with you. Real usage, real reviews. Mobile reviews, a eh? And mobile well, reviews, A Monty and I base all our reviews on actual usage, which means for every video that we do, we have to go spend a lot of time and a lot of money getting stuff so that we can have a good solid answer for. So for all these cheap chargers, like I've got the two that Apple sells in their stores, the uh, Belkin and the Mophie, and like together, that's 120 bucks. And I'll be honest with you, not impressed with the $120 that I spent on them. But we'll get to that. So what is Qi wireless charging? and What's the maximum kind of charge distance? The Qi wireless charging is a standard used by most wireless charging devices. Now there's another one called Power Mats that is gaining popularity. I think Starbucks uh, might incorporate Power Mats into their stores, uh, but Qi is still the standard. At the end of the day, do I really need to worry about it? For now, yes, but I think in the near future, accessory manufacturers are just gonna in incorporate both standards into their wireless charging um, products that would just make the most sense, I think, for the consumer. Qi wireless charging is based on inductive power transfer. You have a base with a transmitter coil and the iPhone, which has the receiver coil. The transmitter coil generates an electromagnetic field that induces a current in the receiver's coil. Now I do have to point out it's an electromagnetic field. That magnetic part is gonna be something that's gonna cause an issue for certain cases, which I'll cover in a bit. Now every Qi wireless setup basically looks the same. You've got a puck, that has a cable that plugs into the wall. So in a way, it's a little more complicated than just charging your iPhone normally, right? Sure, the wireless part's nice, but you like, you still got this, all this stuff. Some products look and feel better while other ones can be very simple looking and cheap feeling. The coil itself doesn't need to be very big as you can see in the semi-transparent charger. Now the Qi wireless standard allows for wattage up to 15 watts, which would be three times your normal iPhone charger. Um, but from what I can tell from, the, from my testing, the amount of power your charger provides didn't make a difference in the charge speeds. Certain products will require to use a larger charger like the Spigen product, but for different reasons. The Spigen product actually has three, char three coils in it, which is probably why it needs all that power. That 15 watt limit is gonna be important when I talk about the comparison between the Galaxy S8 and the iPhone 8. Now, I, it's hard to see in this video, but I actually do have the Spigen um, Essence uh, wireless charger in front of me. And just out of curiosity, you can power a Qi wireless char charging base with a battery pack. I don't know when you would ever use this, and the only reason why I am doing it now is because, well, I was just sitting here and I was just kind of curious. So this is, this works. For the iPhone 8 to use the wireless charging, all you have to do is put your iPhone over the center of the charging base and walk away. Make sure you put it on the center of the pad or else it won't work. Even if you're off by a little bit, your iPhone will start charging, but it's not gonna be getting a full charge as you can see in this time-lapse where the battery on this iPhone 8 is still being drained while sitting on the Qi charger. I will note that you cannot charge your iPhone face down. So this is gonna be a problem for one-handed and gaming cases. When it comes to charging distance, older chargers had a gap of 30 millimeters, I believe, and newer chargers have a gap of 45 millimeters. Now this is theoretical because in my testing, the iPhone 8 reliably charged at a gap of eight millimeters, uh, with some chargers allowing for up to 11 and a half millimeters before the iPhone 8 didn't charge. Now how did I figure this out? And I basically stacked business cards on the chargers and tried to charge my iPhone on top of the stack of business cards. Yeah, high tech. Next question I had was, do I need Qi wireless charging? And the short answer is no. It's kind of a fringe benefit, kind of like the fast charging on the iPhone 8 and X, but Apple seems to be moving away from cables completely, so I guess it kind of makes sense that Apple would do this. Yes, I know Apple is late to the wireless charging game. Yes, I know Android has had them for a while. Why do you keep bringing this up? I don't understand. Okay, just, just stop gloating. 
Just stop what? Stop it. Stop it. Hey, Monty. How about those headphone jacks? But if you want the full iPhone 8 and iPhone 10 experience, get a Qi charger. My guideline for Qi charger placement would be basically anywhere the phone and you spend a lot of time together. Where would I put my Qi chargers? Well, the nightstand would be a good place. The lamp table beside your lounging chair when you're watching TV would also be a good place. Somewhere on your desk if you're a tidy person, which I'm not, and maybe in the kitchen if you're so inclined. In the kitchen, I would probably go one that you can actually see your iPhone easily, like the Spigen Essence charger. Just don't put it in an out of way area like you would see on some of the marketing fluff on some of these websites. Now my biggest gripe for Qi chargers is the size. I need to find a place for the charger puck to sit on and it has to be generally flat. Now I'm a pretty messy person so having to search for my charge pad on my desk is going to be extremely frustrating. It might be bearable if the 30 millimeter range was realistic as I could just plop my iPhone down on my desk but that's not the case so I'm not entirely convinced I would use a charger in my office. Another thing that kind of bothers me about the size is well, it's not that portable. Like, look at the size of Samsung's fast charging puck. Why would I hold that puck around? Like, there's a picture of them putting it into a laptop bag. I still need to bring the adapter and a cable to plug into the wireless charger, and I also have to find an outlet. In a way, it's just very redundant because you could already just charge your device with the power adapter and a cable. I'm all about efficiency, so if I don't need to carry this puck around, I don't think I should. My second gripe with Qi wireless chargers is that I can't really use my iPhone when it's sitting on top of this puck. Right, like I, it's very awkward to hold the puck and the iPhone together in order to use it. Like I just, you know, it's good if you're just gonna leave it down and not use your iPhone for a while, but you know, if you have to use your iPhone then, like if you're a gamer, there's a good chance that your game is probably consuming more energy than the Qi Power uh, puck is providing for your device. Like that just, it doesn't make any sense to me. Like it, yeah. So what's the difference between the S8 fast charging and whatever Apple gave us in the app, uh, iPhone 8? As of right now, the S8 has fast charging, which charges way quicker than the regular charging on the iPhone 8. Now, when Apple announced the iPhone 8 next, I went and bought a bunch of Qi chargers off of Amazon, and several, several of them were labeled fast charge, which made me kind of excited to see the difference in charge rates, but spoiler, there wasn't. Now, I dug a bit deeper, and with the Galaxy S8, the uh, fast charger is based on 15 watts, which we had just talked about a few minutes ago, and not the 5 watts uh, that the iPhone 8 is based on. But still, it's not as fast as a wired connection. Now, I did read a rumor saying that Apple was going to bump up the uh, wattage on their inductive charging uh, from 5 watts to 7.5 watts. So, to mar put marketing spin on it, it'd be 50% faster, but 7.5 watts is not a lot of power. <laughs> So how about charge rates or speeds? I was actually very surprised at the end of this, all this testing that I did, how little difference there was between chargers. Every charger I used charged at the same rate, somewhere between eight and 9% of the total battery capacity on my eight plus every 30 minutes. All the products that I tried included this Belkin Boost Up and Mophie charging base, which are the two products you can get at any Apple store, a Spigen charger and a variety of other cheaper chargers from PicTech and Anchor. Now I even use different chargers uh, with each product, such as the Anchor 2.4 amp charger, the Samsung Adaptive Fast Charger, and just normal chargers for the cheaper brands. And again, no difference in the charger rates on the iPhone 8 Plus. Now I did do a speed test against a normal iPhone charger and the difference is very noticeable. In general, don't use a Qi charger on the iPhone 8 if you're in a hurry, because you're not gonna get a lot of power. Again, eight to nine percent in 30 minutes. If you want the fastest charge possible, you'll need to get an Aptop laptop charger and their expensive USB-C to Lightning cable. In my opinion, that's a scam, and if you want to know more about that scam, I do cover it in my in-depth fast charge video. Now again, at the end of the day, I did not notice a big difference between any sort of the products. Now I was also wondering about the charge speed between the iPhone 8 and the 8 Plus. Well, in this video, it does look like the iPhone 8 is charging much quicker than the 8 Plus, but the iPhone 8 does have a smaller battery. The capacity on the 8 is about 18 milliamp hours, whereas the 8 Plus has about 2700 milliamp hours. So the iPhone 8 Plus is definitely gonna charge slower. Now, before I go talk about compatible cases that work with Qi chargers, if you're finding this video helpful or useful, consider getting all your chargers or your products through my links. This video is unsponsored, so all these things that I'm showing you in this video, I had to go by myself in order to answer all these questions. So it won't cost you anymore. I get a small commission, which means I get to make more videos in the future. 
So which cases work and don't work with Qi chargers? Uh, so we discovered that the maximum distance again was, well, between eight and 11 millimeters, which is a far cry from the uh, standard that they say, but not many cases are gonna add eight to 11 millimeters of space between the back of your iPhone and the charger. Even the largest slim cases that we have, like the Urban Armor Gear Monarch and the Xdoria Defense Lux will still allow your iPhone to charge through the case. The Monarch even has a bit of an alloy and the metal screws on the back, and those don't interfere with the inductive power transfer. You're gonna have a lot more trouble charging your iPhone using odd shaped cases like the Loopy or products like the Ungrip and Pop Socket. It might be okay if you could charge your iPhone face down, but you can't. Now at the beginning of the video, I did, I guess, announce a magnetic and the electromagnetic field that occurs between the two coils. And that's because the magnetic iPhone cases, some of them will not work with Qi wireless charging. And that makes sense because there's a magnetic field that charges stuff and then you're introducing another magnetic field and I'm pretty sure those magnetic fields just don't jive. An example of this is this iFace case, which won't allow my iPhone 8 Plus to be charged wirelessly. Now my Spigen ThinFit 360 with one of Spigen's Neo Diamond and Magnets doesn't allow for wireless charging either. And the same goes for the Evo Tech Ergo, which has its awesome textured back. This is in general a big letdown for me because all these cases I really enjoy using because I like magnetic car mounts over your standard clamp uh, type of car mounts. So if you're going to go with a magnetic car, make sure you pay attention to the uh, manufacturer to see if it works with the Qi charger. Even Apple's own smart battery case won't allow you to ch wirelessly charge the iPhone through the battery case. But I will say this, that not all magnetic cases are made the same. This Morphe Force Hold, which comes with a plethora of different magnetic accessories, will allow you to charge your iPhone 8 through the case. The same can be said for the YOLO 2-in-1 magnetic wallet case. I love this wallet case because it allows me to use my iPhone 8 without the bulk of the uh, wallet when I want to. And even this Boodoo case, which is a module case that has a bunch of small magnets doesn't interfere with the iPhone 8's wireless charging capability. Rule of thumb, in general, if the case has no special functionality like a battery or a magnet or anything, it's probably going to work with any sort of Qi charger that you get. Now out of this group of chargers, I personally would use the Spigen Essence charger and I would only use it in my office. As I mentioned earlier, my biggest gripe with the Qi chargers is the exercise and the fact that I have to put it somewhere relatively flat. Now, I'm sure it would work much better if I was a little tidier as per all the marketing fluff that you'll see on Mophie and Belkin's website. The Spigen charger is a little different as it does come with three cores, so you don't really have to worry about the orientation of your device. You can charge it in landscape and portrait, which is handy. Since the charge station isn't flat, it doesn't get lost in my desk mess. It also has a nice angle for me to glance at my iPhone instead of having to lower it over the device like regular cheap puck chargers. Now, going beyond the Spigen Essential charger, um, I will go with the PicTec. Sure, it looks cheap, feels cheap, is cheap, uh, and it comes in a really nondescript brown box. But this PicTech has the biggest charging gap. So if you want to charge your iPhone in a wallet case and you don't want to have to take the cards out of the back every single time, you try to charge it, get the PicTech. The thing I'm most excited about is going to be Apple's own AirPower. Now, we kind of have no idea what it's going to do. It is going to be wireless charger base, but if you looked at the keynotes, you can charge a lot of things all at once. And I'm hoping that AirPower lays the framework for wireless data sync. That would be pretty neat as well. Yeah. So that's all we got. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, I encourage you to click subscribe as we produce content a lot. Right, buddy? Right? Come on, do something. Acknowledge. Acknowledge the camera at least. Acknowledge the camera. People are watching the video because of you. Yeah, that's all I got. Thanks for watching.